Lauderdale County Schools would like to remind everyone that the athletes performing tonight are friendly rivals as members of opposing teams. The theme of interscholastic athletics is that of friendly competition. The visiting team in every interscholastic game is a guest of the home team and is expected to be so regarded and treated. Profanity and vulgar cheers are abusive to other spectators and are also a reflection of your school and community. This type of behavior will not be tolerated. People involved in this type of activity will be asked to leave with no refund or re-entry and may be banned from future contests or even cause your school to be placed on probation. A reminder that the use of alcohol, drugs, and tobacco are forbidden at all Mississippi high school activities. Air horns and bull horns with sirens are not allowed at athletic events. Trash containers are located all around the bleachers and are expected to be used. Please don't drop trash through the bleachers in the event that there are people walking under you. Your cooperation is greatly appreciated. In that game, had six strikeouts, four run runs, ran his record to four and one. Layton Jenkins was two for three with a home run, three RBIs. Tanner Parker had a good day at the plate again at two for four and three RBIs. Braden Epstein was two for four with his first home run of the year. And Mason Willis added a home run for the day. We then went to Kosciuszko in an attempt to clinch the District 4 4A championship, in which we did in a score of seven to five. Mason Willis pitched. Uh, 
Six innings in that affair, striking out 10, giving up two earned runs to run his record to 7-1 on the year. Brett Busby came in the last inning to get the save. Brett at the plate that night was one of the highlights. He was two for three with an RBI. Cade Kennedy was two for four with two RBIs. And Brooks Buchanan was two for three for two RBIs. Jackson Parker was also two for three. And I'll say Jackson Parker made one heck of a catch in right field up against the fence to help the Knights clinch that game seven to five. It was a tight affair the whole way. Kosciuszko comes into the game with a record of 10 and six. With their last game being against Wes Auderdale on that loss, seven to five on Tuesday. The starting lineups tonight. First off for the visiting, visiting Whippets will be number 11, Kylan Powell, leading off playing center field. Larson Fancher play, uh, hitting second, playing first base. Ethan Wood hitting third, playing right field. Riley Patton will be the DH. Lowland Yule will play third. Connor Wallace will play shortstop and hit six. Ty Ramage will catch and hit eight. Parker Riles will pitch. Will Carter will play left field, and Landon Wallace will be the second baseman. The Whippets are coached by head coach Derek Bolin, assisted by Wesley Dew and Eddie Duncan. West Lauderdale's starting lineup will be leading off Lady Jenkins playing shortstop, Braden Epstein playing second, Cade Kennedy in the hole three, playing left field, Brooks Buchanan in the cleanup slot playing center, Brett Busby at third base and fifth hole, Mason Willis will hit sixth and play first. Kamandre Cole will be the designated hitter for the night. Tanner Parker will catch in the eighth slot, and Jackson Parker will hit ninth in the right field. Dylan Brown will get the nod on the heel. The Knights are coached by Jason Smith, assisted by Jody Hurst, Dustin Hamrick, and Jamie Brown. Dylan comes into tonight's contest with a record of 4-0. Giving up seven earned runs total on the year, only walking six batters with 30 strikeouts. ERA at 1.633. Dylan's having a good year on the mound, throws a lot of strikes, has good command, keeps the ball low in the zone. This will be a good affair tonight. It'll be a good contest. Uh, Kosciuszko has a good club, has played solid all year. We expect nothing less tonight. If you'll notice on the camera, we removed the netting. Many thanks to Stephen Sullivan, as always, for setting up the camera and the broadcast. Always does a great job. We say that every week, but we can't stress it enough. He devotes his time to get this done for us, and we, we appreciate it so much. And tonight, we'd like to give a shout-out to the real voice of the Knights, Dan Brown, who hooked us up with some uh, Lexi, Lexicon glass. So we uh, modified the netting a little bit so the picture is true 4K and clear as a bell with no netting in the way. So I hope you enjoy that this evening. Should be a much more enjoyable broadcast from that standpoint. Good afternoon, baseball fans, and welcome to the campus of West Lawrence High School in Jerry Boatner Field. Tonight's contest features the visiting Kosciuszko Whippets and the West Lauderdale Knights. The Whippets are led by head coach Derek Bolin, and now you're starting lineup in batting order for the Kosciuszko High School Whippets. Starting in center field, number 11, Kalen Powell. For first base, number 12, Larson Fancher. In right field, number 16, Ethan Wood. The DH, number 14, Riley Patton. At third base, number 8, Noel Ewell. At shortstop, number 28, Connor Wallace. The catcher, number 30, Ty Ramage. And the pitcher, number 25, Parker Riles. In left field, number 17, Will Carter. And in second base, number 24, Landon Wallace. The Whippets are led by head coach Derek Bolin, assisted by Wesley Hughes and Eddie Duncan. The Knights are led by head coach Jason Smith. And now he's starting lineup in batting order for the West Lauderdale Knights. Starting at shortstop number three, Layton Jenkins at second base, number 17, Braden Epting. In left field, number 31, Cade Kennedy. In center field, number 23, Brooks Buchanan. At third base, number one, Brett Busby. At first base, number 33, Mason Willis. The DH, number 24, Kamandre Cole. The catcher, number five, Tanner Parker. And in right field, number two, Jackson Parker. Tonight, 
tonight's invocation will be presented by the former West Lauder of this church, Mr. Keith Lovett. So now if you would please stand and remove your hats for the invocation and the playing of the national anthem. Brothers and sisters, would you pray with me? Lord God, we just praise you for who you are and all that you have done. We thank you for the privilege to be here tonight and, uh, as free men and women in a free country to play baseball. Lord, I pray you bless them upon each uh, participant in this game. I pray, Lord, that uh, you would bless them with a spirit of sportsmanship and they would take this and further in their lives, Lord, that all things that these young men will do from this point forward will be pleasing to you. Lord, I pray for our country, uh, that we once again will be a country uh, not divided, uh, with liberty and justice for all men. Lord, that we would turn to you and look to you for guidance in the things going on. Lord, we love you and we praise you. We pray for traveling mercies for the families. Uh, loved ones, and all those that are here tonight and just return them home safe. We pray these things in the strong and powerful, wonderful name of the name that is above all names, in the name of Jesus.
Leading off of the whippets, be Colin Powell, center fielder. Hey, Coach, how are you? I just found out I can watch up uh, y'all stream while I was doing this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate you doing that. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you for dropping by. Y'all may have heard that. Coach Boatner is with us today. So we can, we can enjoy his yodels again, which is outstanding. That's strike one. Good lead off pitch from Dylan. Kylan Powell, center fielder. It's a Really solid player, hit the ball really well Tuesday night. Uh, got on first, attempted to steal, and Tanner Parker threw him out. He's quick. That was the first uh, first time he had been caught stealing all year. So Tanner threw a dart down there. Nice short hop by Layton. Tag got put down. It was a great play to start the game. But the Whippets are a good hitting ball club. Put the ball in play a lot. We did strike out a lot of them on Tuesday, but nonetheless, um, they do hit the ball pretty well. Little tapper on the curveball back to Dylan. That's one up, one down. That was three solid pitches from Dylan and all three strikes in the zone. Tap back to the mound. That's exactly the way you want to get started. Larson Fancher, first baseman, coming up for the Whippets. One out. Good fastball right there. First pitch over, popped up to third base. Brett's got it. Makes a good play over behind the bag in foul territory for two outs. That's four pitches, two away in the first inning for Dillon. That's what he does really well. The two outs. The batter's the right fielder, number 16, Ethan Wood. Ethan Wood coming to the plate, right fielder. Uh, swings a really good bat. Really sang it well Tuesday at a home run in the top of the first, which resulted in Kosciuszko's only two earned runs of the night. Everything else they received was earned runs. As the Knights struggled on defense a little bit that night, uncharacteristically making four errors, um, Dylan gets ahead with a curveball, and that's what this guy should see. There's no reason to really throw him a fastball unless you absolutely have to. He swung the bat extremely well. Got one past him right there outside half. We do have an advantage tonight in the fact the umpire behind the plate is going to call the outside half of the plate. And if you know anything about West Lauderdale this year, we played a first game in Starkville, which we got beat 3-2 to two and had an umpire that pushed everything right down the middle. We had that same umpire against Kosciuszko behind the plate, um, resulted in the same thing. Didn't get many balls on the outside half at all, called for strikes Tuesday night, but we will tonight. Dylan's ahead one and two, two outs to Wood. It's a good pitch right there, low and in. Good spot. Fastball by Dylan. Wood just fought it off, chopped it over the home dugout. Wood's crowding the plate with two strikes. His feet are right on the chalk line. Good pitch. Almost got it past him. Fouls it off, though. See if Dylan might throw him a change up here, low and away. Be a good time to follow what he just threw up. Same spot, but a change up. He keeps it down, I believe he gets him. Outside, it was all speed. Two and two. Another pitch fouled off. It's a good at bat, tough at bat by Wood. Two two count, two outs for the Knights. That was a change up low and away. Three two. And this is what Wood does. Battles and battles. As good at bats.
Ah, got a weak pop-up right there. Mason has it at first. And so we end the inning. Three up, three down. Wood battled hard, but got him off the handle for a soft pop-up to first. So through a half inning, no runs on no hits, no errors. Zero to zero. In the bottom half of the first, shortstop leadoff hitter Leighton Jenkins will come to the plate. Leighton's hitting 339 on the season. Three home runs, 13 RBIs in the leadoff slot. Parker Riles is pitching for the Whippets. The strike on the outside corner. We know that's going to be called all night. It's advantage pitchers. That's low and low and away. One and one count. See if Layton can get it started here. Be nice to get up early. It's down. Oh, no, it caught it a strike. That's one and two. Right at the knees. Now Jenkins behind in the count, one and two. All fastballs from Ryle so far. Nothing else speed. Did throw a, what looked to be a pretty good curveball in warm ups. Look to see it right here. And it is. Two two count ball in the dirt. Breaking pitch. Three two. Low and inside on a fastball. Foul back by Layton. It's a good battle. 81 mile an hour fastball from Riles. He seems to be sitting 78 to 81 so far in the first inning. Layton's got a good battle going. That's inside right there for ball four. So nice to get the leadoff runner on base. 
as Jenkins takes the free pass, heads down to first. Braden Epstein, second baseman. Step to the plate. Braden's hitting 279 on the year. 15 RBIs, five doubles. Junior's committed to Meridian Community College. Layton Jenkins committed to East Central Community College as a senior. Bun attempt, balls outside. Layton's putting on the oven mitt at first. Looks like an oven mitt. He used to protect his glove hand. Throw over, Layton's back in plenty of time standing up. One-o count to Epstein. Ball inside two and zero. Called inside corner on a curveball, 2-1. It's a good pitch from Riles. He didn't miss hitting Braden very much. He was not crowding the plate that much, but he got the call on the inside half. 2-1 count. Layton may have an extra half step right here, maybe going. He throws over, sliding back that time. Had probably one more step on his lead than he did in the previous pitch. Back to that same lead by Jenkins. Bun attempt. Did an offer at it and it was called a strike on the outside half, 2-2. Two -two. That's something the Knights need to do a little bit more of, right? There was a playoffs and I'm sure Coach Smith's thinking the same thing. We're gonna get some close games. We're gonna have to be able to make that play and get that down, push that runner over. And in the two hole hitter, that's what the two hole hitters should do especially at the high school level. Advance the runner, move him around the base pass for your three and four hitters to bring him home. Try to get that early lead. Laden back out to a big lead at first. Ball three, three and two, high, laid off. Braden didn't take the bait right there. Wanted it, but didn't swing at it. So we got another full count, back-to-back -back full counts. Up, oh, ball four. Layton was off and running with the pitch, but ball four draws the walk for Epstein. So now we the round. Knights have runners on first and second. Nobody out. Bottom half of the first. Cade Kennedy coming to the plate. Cade Kennedy with a 407 average, six homers leading the team, the home run category. Cade had the the first real big blow Tuesday night when we had a bases loaded and Cade hits a absolute missile down the left field line for a double. Drove in two. Really kind of got us off to a good start after we had gotten down. Cade hits a curveball out to the right hand side. Right fielder ranges over, makes the play. Jenkins is going to tag. Woods got a good arm, overthrows his cutoff, man. And the Knights have runners on the corners. And Kennedy fly out to right field. You wonder what Coach Smith's thinking early in the game whether he wants to play for a, a bigger inning right here. Might not shock me right here if this is a hit and run. We haven't done a lot of that this year, but the possibility of that exists for sure right here. We're braiding on first, good speed. Brooks at the plate's been making contact all year. They throw over to first. Back in plenty of time. I think Kosciuszko probably thinks we have something on as well. Back again, Braden was leaning, but he's back. Braden was leaning right there, though. 
Brayton's pointing at the pitcher. So I don't know if he made some move. I didn't I didn't see it if he did. Nonetheless, Braden got back. Shorten his lead a little bit. There he goes. Ah, uh, fake bunt. Getting the catcher's line of vision. Kosciuszko doesn't even make an attempt. I noticed that Tuesday night about Kosciuszko. Runners on first and third. You can take second because they will not even attempt to throw out the runner at second with less than two outs. They didn't make an attempt Tuesday night and didn't make an attempt there. So that's interesting. It's 1-0. Oh. 1-0 oh counts the ball high to the cannon. One out for the Knights. Runners on second and third. Let's see if Brooks can put something in play, get somebody home. That's a good pitch from Riles right there. One and one. Good curveball inside half. That had a good deal of bite on it. A little more 12-6 than across the body. It's another one. Gets the call again inside. Catcher did a good job on that one. That ball, that ball is inside, but the catcher is getting that call for sure. Doing a good job back there. One and two. One out in the inning. Ball, it's going to be a pass ball. Comes right back to the catcher. But Layton's going to score easily, so that'll put the Knights up one to nothing. On a wild pitch from Riles. Eptino advanced to third. That'll give the Knights one nothing lead. Count moves to two and two on Buchanan. Ball came straight back off the netting right to the catcher, but Layton had a good jump off third. They had no chance to get him. It's a ball in the dirt again. Count runs to full. So this is three out of four batters have had a full count in this first inning. A lot of pitches for Riles early. And he checked his swing, ball four. Whip is to ask for an appeal. The Knights end up with the runners on the quarters again with one out. It's gonna be a trip to the mound from Coach Bowling for the Whippets. Baseman Brett Busby coming to the plate. Brett's leading the team in average at 450. A couple of homers, 20 RBIs. Also has the most base hits on the team with 20. Brett's having a good year at the plate. He's a solid hitter. Brooks has gone from first. This time they do throw it down and they get him. Really not a Brooks didn't have a great lead there. Yeah. 
and only had a couple of steps on first, maybe didn't get a great jump. Nonetheless, two outs, 1-0 count to Busby. As Kosciuszko does throw it down and through to second. Ball outside, 2-0, and fastball. Brady hits the ball down third baseline, foul. Count moves to two and one. Two outs in the end and nice lead one nothing. Brady Neptune on third. Ball outside, three and one. That's ball four, another walk. So Riles is not throwing, not throwing a lot of strikes in this inning. Kind of struggling a little bit with his command. So that is the first baseman, number 33, Mason Willis. Mason Willis will come to the plate. Two outs in the inning. Mason's hitting 298 on the year. Six doubles. So call strike one. Fastball up in the zone. 0-1 count, two outs. Busby on first, Epstein on third. And strike two, 0-2. Two. two good looking pitches. Mason's put himself in the hole, 0-2. Wouldn't be surprised to see an off-speed ball right here. Something breaking pitch. Ball outside. They throw it down again. And he's safe, and the run will score. The Knights get a run, and Kosciuszko does try to throw it down. And that'll make it 2 nothing Knights. That was a bang-bang play at second. One and two count to Willis. Shortstop moving in behind Busby at second. Deacon him a little bit, trying to push him back. It's a ball high, two and two. I think Mason might have thought that was going to be a breaking pitch. Moved at the last second. Fouled off to the right-hand side. It's a good job fighting off that breaking ball. Let it get to him. Fouled it off to the right-hand side. Trying to deal with the better pitch. It was a good job. Center fielder shading over. They had the spray chart on Mason. That's where Mason likes to hit it, and he's nowhere near center field. Ball up, 3-2. Another full count for Riles. A lot of pitches in this inning. It's got to be at at least 25, 25 to 30 pitches so far. Every hitter set for Kennedy has run the count full. Nice, don't have a hit in the end and, and are leading two to nothing.
And Willis swings and misses the end of the inning. So at the end of one, the score, Knights two on no hits, no errors. How's the yes go? Nothing. Ball outside, first pitch fastball from Dylan Brown. Riley Patton, the designated hitter, hitting for the Whippets. Two O count, two misses by Dylan. Swing and a miss, 2-1, fastballs by Dylan. See if Dylan can come back, get back ahead of the hitter. Ball outside, 3-1. Good pitch right there, 3-2. Maybe just off the plate. Calls Patton to chase it. See if Dylan can come back and put him away right here in a 3-2 count. A little bit low, ball four. They issue a walk. Dylan hadn't walked many batters this year. So that's unusual for him. Dylan's got a grand total of six walks in 30 innings, so it's not common for him to issue a free pass. Nonetheless, the Whippets had the leadoff runner, leadoff hitter of the inning on first. Nolan Yule, third baseman, hitting for Kosciuszko. Good pitch right there, good location. Down and in, 0 and 1. Any pitcher wants to live at the knees. And Dylan does a good job of that. Patton doesn't have much of a lead any, at first at all. Good curveball right there. Epstein comes up a little bit short on that ball. I believe that'll be scored a hit, and it is. So now the runner's on first and second. Nobody out. Kosciuszko has something brewing in the 
Top of the second. Back, he had him, and uh, just in. Just in. Layton got the glove down. I think if Layton breaks a little bit sooner and Dylan gives it, waits just a split second more, they have him out. Dylan Wheel had to wait on Layton to get there before he threw it, but they had him napping. Couldn't quite execute it to perfection right there. Strike, lower half the plate, 0-1. Connor Wallace to shortstop. Kaziesko hitting, no one count. Runners on first and second. Runners got a fairly decent lead at first. So we're going to say it's not a bad idea. Mason moved in behind the runner at first. It caused him to shorten up a hair. I'm sure Tanner will check his secondary and see if there's a chance to throw behind him with the runner on second. Good curveball from Brown right there. That's 0 and 2. Dylan with a sweeping curveball. Took a lot off of that, had a lot of break. He looked. Uh, Hitter didn't look real good on that pitch. Wouldn't be surprised if Dylan comes right back to the same pitch right here. Fastball outside half. No call, one and two. Now he comes back with the breaking ball, but way, a little bit, way too far outside to be competitive right there. Two strikes, you want your pitches near or close to the strike zone, especially on a one-two count. And make the hitter chase just out of the zone, make him make a decision as to whether or not he's going to have to swing. Good fastball right there. And Wallace got a piece of it. Good job of hitting. He had him late on that. Had him fooled. He fought it off. Two two count. Nobody out in the inning. Knights lead two nothing. Top of second. These two teams are clearly, I think, the best two teams in uh, District Four with four A classification. Down the third base line. That's pulled into the corner. Kennedy stops it. Runner's going to hold it third, and the Whippets are going to have bases loaded. Nobody out. That was a good at bat by Wallace. Fought off some tough pitches. Stay competitive, got one that could handle. Hit a hard ground ball in the left field line. It's cut off nicely by Cade in left. Ball could have got to the wall, but Cade got there and quickly to cut it off. So Ty Ramage, the catcher. Coming to the plate, Kosciuszko. Looks like Mason's playing in at first. Brett's playing out, playing back. Strike one to the catcher right there. So one count. Dylan really needs a needs a strikeout out here. Or nothing or if anything else. Maybe a hard hit ball to Mason at first. Cut the runner down at home. Middle infield's playing back in double play depth. Playing for the double play to shorten the inning. A strike two outside corner. That's where Dylan wants to live right there. The umpire we have behind the plate. He's going to call that all night. If you can throw it there, it is. It's tough to get a bat on it and be successful. 0-2 oh, count. Ground ball. Foul. Still 0-2. Oh, Oh, 
0 2 offering from Dillon. Third ball fouled off again. Left that one up. Ramage is out in front. Line drive off the batting cage in left field. Let's see if Dillon comes back with that fastball away, outer half of the plate right here. I think if he throws that to him, he might get him. Banner sets up outside. There it is. Little bit low, one and two. Good pitch. Brett playing back at third. Mason playing in at first in front of the runner. Base hit up the middle. Fastball right on top. Jackson Parker coming in. And we cut him down at the plate. Good job. Good job right there on the relay throw from Jackson Parker in center. I didn't notice we had a defensive switch. I was surprised to see Jackson in center. Brooks must have exited the game. It looked like he got hurt. Maybe a little bit of an injury or something when he stole the base. But Matt Etheridge has entered the, entered the game in right. Jackson in center. Nonetheless, Jackson makes a great throw to Willis. Willis. Turns, relays home, cuts the runner down. Kosciuszko gets one run on that play, but the Knights need a much needed out. Three hits in the inning for the Whippets. They do swing the bats well. Like I said before, clearly the best two teams in this district, Kosciuszko and West Lauderdale. And West Lauderdale win in Tuesday night. Clint's for us the district for, for a championship. Kosciuszko did lose a game in the Northeast, and no matter what happens, that tiebreaker will cost them the district championship at this point. Ball outside, 1-0. West Lauderdale still leads 2-1. That went through the legs of the third baseman. And I'll tell you guys, the last two games of Knights defense has not had their best effort. Had four errors against Kosciuszko on Tuesday night and could have been five. We had two on one play. But we've had two balls in this inning that probably plays should have been made on. That one's definitely an error. Went through the went through the legs of, of um, Busby. There. There's no way you can't you can't call that an error. The first one is questionable. Probably could have made a play on it though. Good curveball from Dylan. That's 0 and 1. To Will Carter, the left fielder. The Knights have one out. Score is still two to one with Sauterdale. Base is loaded with whippets. Another curveball down to third baseline. Again, we can't make the play. Two runs. Looks like they're going to try to come home. And they do. And the Kosciuszko will take the three to two lead. So Kosciuszko's got what I believe is four hits in the inning. At least one error, possibly two. And back to the top of the order. Kalen Powell, the center fielder, coming up. Ball high and outside. 1-0 count. Ball 0-2-0. Two and zero. Looks like we may be looking for the bunt right here. One out. 
Willis creeping in from first. There he squares. It's popped up. Foul ball, one strike. 2 1 count. Still one out in the inning. Kosciuszko runners on first and second. Three two score. And a two one count. Squares the bunt. I believe he'll pull that back. It's real early. Nope. Foul straight back. Now it's two strikes on the hitter. Two two count. Coach gives him a do your job. Do your job comment. What that means he's going to try to lay it down with two strikes. He's hitting. And the base is stolen uncontested. So now, Kosciuszko has runners on the corners. 3-2 count, one out. Kosciuszko leads 3-2. Four hits in the inning, one error on the Knights. Ground ball to third. Coming home for the tag, and we cut another runner down at the plate. So two runners, two outs in this inning, and both coming home. I got to say... I think Kosciuszko, by the end of the night, I hope they wish they had those back because that is two decisions. The one from center, I understand that one. I do not. It just went on contact, hoping we were going to go for the double play. And instead, we took the out at home, which was all it took was a good throw. So score three to two, two outs. Number two hitter, Fancher up. Good breaking pitch, a little low and out of the zone, 1-0. Oh. Base hit, nope. Jenkins ranges over, makes a good play, throws it to first, and we're out of the inning. That's a good play by Layton right there behind, behind second base, good range. So that saves a run. And through one and a half, Kosciuszko leads three to two. At four hits in that inning, one error by the Knights. Andre Cole leading off the bottom half of the second for the Knights. Andre comes in hitting 356, 20 RBIs on the year. Takes a strike, 0 and 1.
And a strike two on the corner. 0 2. One and two pitch, fastball in the dirt. Fly ball out to right field, Wood won't make the play, drops in for a single. So Camandre get the Knights' first hit of the evening, a single to right field. Kind of fisted off the, fisted off the bat out to right field. Tanner Parker coming to the plate. Tanner sitting 262. 14 RBIs to his credit. Swing and a miss. Good cut, 0 and 1. A fly ball out to right field. Right fielder coming over. Should make the play, and he does. So that's one away. As Parker flies out to right. And Jackson Parker, brother of Tanner, comes up. Jackson had a good night at the plate Tuesday night, two for three. I mentioned the catch he made in the last inning. Kosciuszko, the right field line, runs right up against the, the right field foul fence. Strike, outside corner 0-1. And, and Jackson ran full speed to catch a ball that was going to question whether it was going to be foul or fair for the second out in the last inning and really kind of preserved the win for us all. That ball falls, it's a whole different inning. Jackson put an all for it, all out effort. Crashed into the fence, made the play. It was a great effort on his part. One and one count to Parker, one out in the inning. Come on, Dre Cole stands at first on a single to right field for the Knights' first hit of the inning. Jackson Parker at the plate. Jackson, good, good ball to the shortstop, makes a good play. They won't double up Jackson, he's pretty fast. But they do get the out at second for the second out of the inning. It's a good backhanded play with the shortstop. So back to the top of the order. Jackson Parker at first, good speed. Layton Jenkins the plate. Layton's got pretty good power. He could pop one out of here. Strike outside corner. <laughs> the umpire definitely gives the pitchers a little bit off the plate, which if you're a pitcher you love, you hit or you hate. Fouled off the right hand side, behind in the count 0-2 is Layton. Ball high, one and two. Riles is doing a better job throwing strikes in this inning. Not falling behind in counts. Layton fought that pitch off, still one and two. A little bit inside and high. Fouls it off to the left hand side. And two outs, Jackson to get a good jump. A lot of space in the right field line. Layton doesn't normally hit it there, but if he does, Jackson will score, I believe, on that play. There's a drive into left center field. Bobble by the center fielder. That's going to give the Knights a chance to get those runners in scoring position. Throw gets past the second baseman, stopped by the first baseman, but that'll give the Knights runners on second and third on what I believe is a single and an error for Jenkins. Error on the center fielder, and he picked it up and bobbled it. Now Braden Neptune at the plate. Braden Neptune. 
That's the Knights' second hit of the inning. Knights manufactured two runs in the first inning on no hits at all. A lot of walks, pass balls. The ball high, 1-0. One and one. Strike blowing on the outside corner. Good location by Riles. Knows he's getting that call. He keeps throwing it there. And that hit him. That'll load him up. Braden crowded the plate right there just a little bit. It was enough to get to get hit right in the center of the bat. And now the hitter, I do not want to think Kosciuszko sees coming up to the plate, wants to see coming up to the plate with the bases loaded. It's Cade Kennedy. Cade Kennedy did some major damage Tuesday night on a line drive on the third baseline with the uh, bases loaded the other night. See if we can help us out right here. It's a massive cut by Cade, swing and miss, 0-1. Fastball low and away. Dave threw out to right his last time. Ball in the dirt. One and one. And one. Swing and a miss. One and two. Definitely pitching Kennedy outside. One two count and look for a breaking pitch here. Be my guess. I know he's looking always fastball, but he may get a breaking pitch. Nope, fastball. He hit it good to right field. Woods on the run. Oh, and he makes an outstanding play. I believe he called it. Ran right into the wall. I believe he robbed Kennedy. Man, he took it. But what a play by Wood. Give him some credit. Went all out, ran into the wall, and I believe Rob Cade of at least a double, if not a home run. That ball was hit well. It was a great play by Wood out in right. So, at the end of two, the Knights score no runs on two hits. No errors. Kosciuszko still leads three to two. I believe Ethan Wood, the right fielder that ran into the fence at the end of the end is the first hitter up. I believe they're assessing him. Here he comes. Might have had a little injury he was dealing with up running that fence, but 
I'm sure he's the type of player who's going to battle through it. And so Ethan Wood will lead off the inning. Right fielders made an outstanding play. He'll lead it off for the Whippets. And comes up and probably singles to left. So on the first pitch of the inning, Ethan Wood follows up a great play with a base hit. You see that a lot. Make a great play in the field and come up to the plate and have something good happen. Riley Patton coming up for Kosciuszko. Clean up hitter in the designated hitter position this evening. Throw her the first back in plenty of time. <laughs> Ball O, one and O. Knights have some action in the bullpen. Looks like a left-hander. I think it's Cole Wilkerson. Goes down a second. And he got him. Good throw and tag by Tanner Parker. Cuts down the runner. Kosciuszko likes to run, and Tanner has made him pay a couple of times in this two-game series. So, takes the leadoff runner out of play. One and one count now to Patton. Nobody on, one out in the inning. It's a good throw by Tanner, great tag by Layton. Layton got there a little bit late, but had enough to get it on him. It's a good curveball, check swing by Patton. It's two-one count. Ball outside, 3-1. Pop up on the infield. Communication. And Dylan will take it himself for out number two in the inning. Coming up to the plates, Nolan Yule, third baseman. The two outs, so that is third baseman number eight, Nolan Yule. Yule singled his last time up. Curveball down and away. 1 0 count. That's a good pitch right there, one and one. That's where Dylan wants to live. The hitters don't like that call, but he's going to call it all night. If Dylan can throw it there, he's going to have success from here on out. Same pitch. This time he had to take a swing at it. It's one and two. Tough to do anything with that pitch. Ball in the dirt, two and two. And it gets a strikeout to end the inning. So an unconventional three up, three down inning with the 
runner cut down at second base, but nonetheless, Dillon gets a three up, three down in, and, and at the through two and a half, the score is three to two nights. Matt Etheridge now hitting in Brooks Buchanan spot in the cleanup hole. Matt's playing right. If the Brooks was injured, sliding into second in the first inning. Second inning, excuse me. That's the strike on the outside corner. That's strike two, 0 and 2. Matt comes in hitting 261. So we hope Brooks is okay. It's nothing too bad or serious. A little bit further outside. He didn't get that call one and two. Pushing it out there. And that's what he should do. Let's test the limits of where the umpire is going to call that pitch. Ball two and two. Matt did a good job of laying off that. It was a good curveball starting in the middle of the plate. Broke out of the zone, but it was competitive. Matt certainly had to think about whether he needed to swing at that or not. Good two-strike pitch. Good job by Etheridge right there. Fouled it off the right-hand side. And he runs count full, three and two. Riles already thrown a lot of pitches, had 53 pitches um, through two innings already tonight. Good job by Matt again, fouled it off. That was a good pitch from Riles. Matt was able to get a piece of it, push it off the right-hand side. Extend the bat one more pitch. Center fielder shading Matt way over. Not playing anywhere near center field. It's a huge gap up the middle. And he hits it short. It's going to be a tough play. It's going to fall for a single. So Etheridge will lead off the bottom half of the third for West Lauderdale with a, a CNI single over the second baseman's head. Bring up Brett Busby. Busby drew a Drew a base on balls last at bat. 
over for over on the night. Curve ball, strike, outside corner, good pitch. Good placement from Riles right there. Over one count to Busby. Etheridge at first. Etheridge's not got a big lead. I don't imagine he's going down three to two with Brett at the plate. Brett's had a good season so far at the plate. Let him swing the bat. Kosciuszko catcher throws it well. Pitcher gets it to the plate quick. Snap throw to first. He's back plenty of time. Ball, one and one. It's a good pitch. Called a ball, though. Pitcher's got a good slide step. He's quick to first. Defending stolen bases is not just on the catcher. The pitcher has to be able to deliver the ball to first quickly. I mean, excuse me, deliver it to home quickly. If it takes a pitcher with a high leg kick, it's much easier. There's a ball in the right field thrown away. Etheridge is going to make his turn. Head to third. Knights will have runners on third. Runner on third base with nobody out and an overthrow at first on a pickoff attempt. So that'll be Kosciuszko's first error on the night. As Etheridge goes from first to third on the overthrow. Busby with a one and one count now. Can tie this thing up with a ball deep to the outfield or a base hit. Putting the ball in play. Seeing something good will happen for West Lauderdale. Nobody out in the inning. There's a foul ball off the right hand side out of play. One and two. There's a drive right field. Wood makes a great play and Etheridge wasn't tagging. Now he's still going to tag. Play at the plate, and he scores anyway. Matt took off thinking it was going to get over his head or get down, and it did not. Wood made a great play, but Etheridge is able to retreat to third, tag up in time, and score. And I'm sure Coach Smith's going to say there's really no reason for that. I mean, if, if the ball gets down, you're going to walk in. So why not hold on the bag and see what happens? Mason Willis at the plate. Strike out his last, struck out his last time up. Center fielder shades him way over. Mason hits it right to where the center fielder was, and he's not going to make a play. And that'll be a single for Mason Willis. Little fisted single out into center field. Center fielder played so far over to right, he had no chance to get that. So sometimes you play the spray charts and it works out. And sometimes it doesn't. Come on, Dre Coles up. Mine single to right his first time up. Takes a curveball for a strike on the outside half. 64 mile an hour curveball there from Riles. Almost 20 mile, well, 18 mile an hour difference or so between his fastball and his curveball. It's a pretty good difference. Mine hits a drive to center. Deep ball. Way back. And that's off the. Windscreen in center for a two-run shot for Comandre Cole. Mon got all of that ball. And that's Comandre's first high school home run of his career. He'll remember that one. He hit it a ton out the center. That pushes the score to five to three nights. Tanner Parker coming up. Ball high and inside. Tanner takes it. Tanner's 0-1 on the night. 
Boy, it was good to see that. Mine got all of that one. Strike on the inside half, one and one. 360 to here. 360 here at what Jerry Boatner Field to center field, and that ball was almost halfway up the windscreen. Hit it well. One and two on a swing and miss by Parker. And that's going to get him outside corner. The pitch has been called all night. So that's a strikeout looking for Parker on a tough pitch on the outside corner. Two outs in the inning for the Knights. Jackson Parker coming up. Jackson Parker 0 for 1 tonight so far. Jackson looking to bunt for a hit. Jackson does that well. Lays that thing down third baseline. He's fast, left side. Moves really well. If he gets it in the grass, he is hard to throw out. And third baseman's still playing back. He hadn't moved in at all. If I was Jackson, I'd give it another shot. Strike two. Outside corner 0-2. And swing and a miss for three outs in and strike out of Parker. However, at the end of three, score is West Lauderdale five, Kosciuszko three. Connor Wallace will leave off, lead off the top half of the fourth for Kosciuszko. It's one for one. Singled his last time up. Curveball. Dylan kind of got away from Dylan a little bit. Wallace stuck out of the way of it. 1-0 count. Good pitch from Dylan inside half, one and one. Whippets hitters have kind of started crowding the plate, trying to reach that outside corner. Now's when Dylan should bust them inside for sure, just like he did right there. They'll have a hard time handling that pitch from where they're setting up the batter's box at this point. There it is again. Easy pop fly to first. Mason makes the play. That'll be one out. If they're going to crowd the plate, you go inside, and that's what you get. Easy ground balls and easy pop flies. Ty Ramage coming to the plate. The catcher's done a good job tonight throwing down through runners. Now he's off the plate a little bit, so my thought is Dylan's going to go to the outside corner. Up and high, 1-0. and 
you see Tanner Parker checking out where the hitter is standing at and then making the adjustment based on that. So Tanner's doing a good job of leading Dillon in the right direction. There it is. That's the strike right there, outside corner. It's a good work by the catcher. A lot of people don't understand what all the catcher's doing behind the plate. He's watching where the hitter's standing. There's another, same location, one and two. And Tanner's done just that for the first two batters. This one, he's got him in the middle of the box, pitching him away, the first one. Up on the line, pitched him inside. It's a good pitch, two and two. I believe that one's high, three, two. There it is, strike three, good pitch from Brown right there inside half. Gets the strikeout, two outs in the inning. And the pitcher Parker Riles coming up. Kosciuszko has action in their bullpen. Nolan Yule, third baseman, throwing in the Kosciuszko bullpen. It's a first pitch strike right there from the Dillons, and a good job in this inning of getting first pitch strikes over. Get ahead of your hitter. Another good pitch, 0-2. <clears throat> Tanner set up way outside. And he got him to chase it, 0-3. Good inning from Dillon. By far his best inning of the evening. Had command to where he wanted to throw that ball. So through three and a half, no runs, no hits, no errors, and the end is because the ESCO score remains five three nights. So it's back to the top of the order for the Knights in the bottom half of the four. Bottom half of the fourth, Leighton Jenkins will lead off. Ball high. Jenkins is one for one on the Knights, scored a run, walked. Has doubled. His only official at bat. And 1-1 one, one count to Jenkins. It's a good curveball from Riles. Shortstop range is over, makes a good play. Layton's quick, and he barely got him by a step. Good play with the shortstop. So he retires Jenkins. Sets one away on a hard ground ball to the shortstop. 
Nice play range into his left. Good strong throw to first. Two hole hitter Braden Neptune up. Braden's 0 for 0. Base on balls. Hit by pitch. His last at bat. It's a ball up. 1 and 0. One and one, strike at the knees. The fastball center cut, just at the kneecaps on F team. One and two, got that past him. So now F in the hole. One and two. One out in the end. Jenkins hard ground ball to the shortstop. Ball outside, try to get him to chase there two and two. It's a good idea by Riles, trying to get the batter to expand the zone a little bit. That was competitive pitch on two strikes. Braden's crowding the plate a little bit. Catcher moves inside. And gets the check swing foul ball. Stay alive by Braden. So that too's a good job by the whippet catcher. See him with the hitters lining up. Changing where you want to throw the ball. Setting up on the outside half. That's a curve. That ball's down the right field line. May stay fair. It does. Woods got a good arm for second, but he fumbles it, and Epstein will go into second on a stand-up double. So Baden did a good job of getting getting that ball, putting it in play. Right down the right field line. So now the Knights have a runner in scoring position. Kate Kennedy at the plate. Kate hit a missile in the right center field his last time up, and Ethan Wood just made an outstanding play. Um, crashed into the wall, held on to the ball. And now they're playing Kate as a dead up pull hitter. Kate hit hits it down the right field line. He'll run for days. It's a ball high, 1 0, breaking pitch. Knights lead 5 to 3, one out in the inning. Epteen stands at second base, 1 0 count to Kennedy. Kay did a mighty cut at that, 1 and 1, fouled straight back. Just missed it. Catcher sets up on the outside half. Okay, he takes it. Good take, two and one. Ball high, three and one. So now they got to come to him, unless they're content to put him on base, which I don't think they'd want to do right now. 3-1 count to Kennedy. If Cade's looking, as Coach Bowden used to say, it's the best pitch in baseball. Hitters count. 3-1 pitch. You know he's coming right at you. There it is. Cade popped it straight up and back. Just missed it. Just missed it. 3-2 count. Fly ball popped up on the infield. Catcher's calling for it. Woo! It's a tough play for the catcher right there. Got out and made a great play. Basket catch. 
So they retire Kennedy going to pop up on the infield. On the pitch away. Catcher makes a nice play. Matt Etheridge will come up. Matt singled his last time up, scored a run. Two outs, Epstein's got good speed. The base hit, he will probably try to, it'll probably score Epstein. Fly ball out to right field, right fielder's under it. Makes the play, so the Knights get retired. A long double for West Lauderdale in the bottom. To lead off for the Whippets, the left fielder, number 17, Will Carter. Left fielder, Will Carter, a lead off for the Whippets. The Knights have a pitch and change. Cole Wilkerson entered the game. Cole Wilkerson's got a 2.9 ERA on the year, 4-1 record. Gets a strike right there on a bunt. Bunt attempt by Will Carter. Cole's got 48 strikeouts and 29 innings. Two and one count. Foul ball on the right hand side. So the count will move to one and two. ball out to center. Jackson Parker's under. It makes a play for the first out of the inning. So good job by Cole coming in. The nine on Dylan Brown tonight will be Dylan pitched four innings, gave up five hits, three runs, all of which were earned. Walked one and struck out three. So Dylan exits the game with a chance to get the win. So back at the top of the order for the Whippets. Kalen Powell, center fielder. Foul ball off the right hand side, 0 and 1. Please 
And strike two right there. Great pitch from Cole Wilkerson. Cole signed a pitch at East Central Community College next year, along with a couple of his teammates, Leighton Jenkins and Mason Willis. That's a good breaking ball. Cole does have a good one of those. Good throw from Tanner Parker. And so that's two quick outs from Cole. Larson Fancher, first baseman for Kosciuszko coming up. Two outs in the end and two quick outs from Cole. Breaking pitch away, 1-0. and oh. And This is what the game was Tuesday night. It was a back and forth affair. Both teams having a couple of big innings with Sauterdale especially having a big inning in the second inning where we put six on the board and then added one later to get seven. Kosciuszko started out with two in the first, one in the second. Then added two more late. The score ended up seven to five, but it was nip and tuck. Well played game by both sides. Same way it is tonight. Both teams hit the ball. Had to earn their way to victory that night. Nothing was given to you. That's a good pitch right there. and That'll be the end of the inning. So Wilkerson comes in and does a three up, three down inning, which is Solid, solid beginning for Cole to his relief appearance. And through four and a half, the score is five to three on no hits and no errors in the inning. Leading off the inning for the night will be Brett Busby. He's reached base on a walk. Leading off of the night, the third baseman number one, Brett Busby. So far tonight, no official at bats. And he'll go down in the count 0 and 1. Good breaking ball from Riles right there, 0-2. Right down early, 0-2. It'd be nice to tack on a couple more. I got a feeling we're going to need at least one, if not two more, to, end, to finish this game out. 1-2 count to Busby. Ball to get away, got away a little bit from Riles. It stretches his leg. His stride leg, maybe kind of landed funny right there. Good job right there, holding off that. That was a good pitch from Riles. Competitive curveball with two strikes. Brett offered, but didn't take it in the dirt. 2-2 two -two count. Another pitch, 3-2. 
Another good breaking ball, just low. Had to be a little low in the zone. So Brett's run the count to full. And he gets the walk. So that's a good at bat from Brett Busby right there. Started 0-2 and, and was able to battle it out. End up on first base with nobody out for Mason Willis. Mason singled his last time up on a soft liner to center field. Kosciuszko defense has been shading him to hit towards right field, which is... This time he's not quite shading over as far as he was. Curveball outside corner, 0-1 count. Moved a little bit backboard towards center. There's the ball down. Ah, oh, good play by the third baseman. Hard hit ball to third. Backhanded by the third baseman, thrown to second. There was some contact there, but no call on the play. That's interesting. Mason will end up at first on the fielder's choice. Force out at second. I think the Kosciuszko coach is saying that he interfered with the guy at second to break up the double play. There was some contact. I didn't see it. Clear enough to make a, to make a judgment on that. And they're going to say no call on that, just the out at second. Willis will remain at first. Busby will be retired at second, so there will be one out. Knights have runner on first. Come on, Dre Cole coming up. Come on, Dre Cole in his last at bat. Hit one right over the end, and Knights in center field into the wind sock. Coach Boland still complaining about the call. I think he disagrees, but it's not. Nonetheless, it's not going to be changed. <laughs> Coach Boland had some outbursts in the game Tuesday night as well, so get the impression that's not uncommon. So one out in the inning. Mon swings and misses. One and one. It's a good cut. One out in the inning. Score still five to three nights. That's a ball. And Mason will move to second. Pitcher went to throw to throw to first, slip, didn't throw the ball. As a result, that's a ball to go to second. <laughs> then Coach Bolton wants a timeout to check on his pitcher, make sure he's not injured and he's okay. couple of pitches to make sure he's okay. It looks like maybe he twisted his ankle, maybe his right ankle. Foot he pushes off of. Make sure he's got the energy to do it. Looks okay though, I think he'll be fine. It's a tough kid. So we got one out, a one and one count to Comandre Cole. Mason Willis at second base. Ball gets away from the catcher. Willis will stride into third. 
So now the Knights have an insurance run, much needed insurance run, 90 feet away. Mason's got decent speed, long strides, fly ball in the outfield. I do believe anywhere but right field will probably score him. Ethan Wood is playing really deep. I'm sure if he caught the ball on the run in right field, he will probably have a strong enough arm to make it a play. I think the rest of them would score. It's ball, three and one. It's outside, it's a little bit too far outside for the umpire to call that one. That's a good job by Kamandre, draws a walk. So now nice have runners on the corners. Tanner Parker coming up. Looks like we're gonna have another visit to the mound. I don't think the first visit counted. Um, looks like he is gonna make a pitching change, but the first visit was an injury visit. So if he chose not to, he could, um, he could take that visit and I'll make a switch. But it does look like he's going to the third baseman, which will be Nolan Yule, who was throwing in the bullpen last half inning, trying to get loose. Just looking at Kosciuszko's stats, these are their three primary pitchers, of Ethan Wood being the right fielder. Riles, who was on the mound until they brought in Yule, and then, and then of course, Yule is just coming to the mound. Seem to be their three primary pitchers. So the line on Riles will be, he'll pitch four and a third, give up six hits, five runs, all of which are earned, six base on balls, and record three strikeouts. And he'll leave the game in a losing scenario down by the score of five to three. Knights has inserted a pinch runner for Comandre Cole over at first base in the form of Cooper Luke. Cooper's got good speed. Now this is a good situation. Coach Smith hasn't done a whole lot of it this year. But this is a good situation late in the game, bottom of the fifth. You know, do you squeeze here? Do you put down a bunt, try to make something happen? Try to get one more run to take that three run lead into the six with six outs left to go. Anything's possible. With one out, that is catcher number five, Tanner Parker. So Tanner Parker comes to the plate with one out. No count on him. 5-3 lead for the Knights. Bottom of the fifth. Cooper Luke stands at first after Mondra Walt. He was inserted as a pinch runner. Mason Willis stands at, at third after grounding into what could have been a double play, but wasn't effectively turned by the Whippets. Tanner Parker fouls it straight back. Kosciuszko is not honoring the squeeze attempt or bun attempt at all right here. It's be interesting to see. Nope, play it first. Nothing doing. Tanner doesn't square. Sometimes pitchers may do that just to see if you're going to square around and give it away so the defense knows what to do. Cooper Luke doesn't have a huge lead at first, although sending him is not out of possibility either. Ball spiked short of the plate. One and one.
Throw to first. Back in plenty of time. <clears throat> Buell seems to be sitting low 80s, 80 82. So far in the first few pitches, he's thrown. A little bit faster than Riles, who was pitching earlier. Riles is more of a high 70s and touching low 80s every now and then. And he almost had him. He was leaning, but he got back. He was leaning. I believe something was on right there. Let's see if Coach Smith keeps it on. Now Kosciuszko knows something's going on. Cooper doesn't have a big lead. Shortens his lead a little bit there. It's a result of almost getting picked off. And he doesn't go. Tanner Parker swings and misses. So now he got two strikes. Runner on first. One on third. Two strikes makes it difficult to do what you want to do. Simply because you don't want to have a strike them out, throw them out situation. Two and two. Cooper needs one more step on his lead. He's going to go. Tanner fouls it all, stays alive. Two and two. So far, nothing but fastball. Nothing but fastballs from from mules. Haven't seen an all-speed pitch yet. There's one, and it's high. So that was interesting. It's not an effective off-speed pitch from Mule right there, but he's just getting loose. It's more of a 12 to 6 curveball, which can be devastating if you get it in the zone. It's got a sharp break. Those are tough to hit. Back. Cooper Loop back in plenty of time. Not much of a lead for Cooper. 3 2 count. Tanner's battling at the plate. Another throw over to first. Tanner Shreen strikes out. Cooper will take second base. So there'll be two outs, but the Wrights will have two runners in scoring position, but Jackson Parker coming to the plate. Leighton Jenkins on deck. Now, Jackson, Jackson were to lay down a bunt down the third baseline, it would be completely unexpected. It probably would result in a hit. Wouldn't get the run home. It's a strike outside corner to a left-hander. 0-1 count. Ball high. One and one. And two outs in the inning. Five to three nights. Bottom of the fifth. Mm. One and two. And Jackson crowds will play a little bit after that call. As for time, receives it. One and two, two outs. Runners on second and third, five, three nights. Bottom half of five. Jackson! Yeah, that's a base hit right there up the middle. 
Willis is going to score. Here comes the throw home, and he'll score easily. Throw down to second, and Parker will pull in there with a single and take second on the throw through to home. Those are two big insurance runs. Jackson Parker comes through clutch in that situation, and the Knights extend the lead to 7-3. to three. We're back to the top of the order. Layton Jenkins up. Layton Jenkins. Layton's one for two on the night. Scored a run. Swing and a miss on a good curveball from Yule right there. It is a 12 6 He got that in the middle of the part of the plate and it dropped off the table. That was a good pitch. Another one. Layton's chased both of them. I don't think either one of them are strikes, but they're a good pitch. 0 and 2. And he got him. So he pitched Jenkins well. Gets out of the inning, but the damage was done on a single by Parker and two RBIs. At the end of five, with Lauderdale leads 7-3. Ethan Wood to lead, lead off the inning for Kosciuszko. Cole Wilkerson returns to the mound. Ethan Wood's one for two on the day. Ground ball in the hole. That'll be a single. It's a tough play right there. So it'll be a leadoff hit for Ethan Wood. I have two singles on the on the night so far. And Kosciuszko will have a runner at first. Riley Patton will come to the plate, designated hitter. Kosciuszko's got the leadoff guy on first. Well, Sauterdale leading 7-3. That's a good leadoff strike right there by Cole. Hits ahead of the hitter. Breaking pitch. Outside, one and one. No real lead to speak of from Wood at first base. Cold is showing him, keeping him honest. Good breaking pitch, one and two. I don't 
don't think Patton knew what to do with that. That was a sharp breaker. Across the plate, right at the knees, right in the center of the plate. But it had a lot of break on it, and it was sharp. It's a good pitch from Cole right there. He might follow it up with the exact same pitch. See if he can get him to chase it. He does. Leaves it up a little bit, so he moves two and two. Fouled off. Good job of battling by Patton. That was a good pitch from Cole. Inside fastball. Patton battled it, knocked it up. Just got a, just nicked it to stay alive. Ball outside. Got by Tanner, didn't get by far enough for runner first to advance. So the count runs full. Throw to first. Back in plenty of time. Wood really has no lead to speak of over there. He could steal, but down seven to three, every run has to matter with only six outs left to get. Don't think he wants to run himself out of an inning. At least I wouldn't think the coach would. That's ball four. Now we have two men on, nobody out for the Whippets. Nolan Yule coming to the plate, pitcher. Yule is one for two. Struck out one time today. Double play ball will be nice. Good pitch from Cole, fouled straight back. Counts 0 and 1. Good curveball. That's going to be a tough play. Best let that go foul. Good job, Brett Busby. Let it go foul. Touch it as quick as you can. Keep it there. Once you touch a ball in foul territory, that's where it is, it's foul. You don't touch it. It can always hit something. Catch a lip of, lip of the grass, kick back into fair territory, and now you've got a problem before it crosses the bag. So we've got an 0-2 count on Yule. Cole could do with a strikeout right here. Oh, he got him. Yes, sir. There's no need to throw it. He got him out at first. He's out at first. Didn't have to throw it, but did he get the runner? So we had a call. The hitter was out, didn't have to throw it to first, and then they slapped, they put the tag on the runner at first. Is he in, is he out or safe? We don't know the call yet. And the umpire called him out, so that's a double play. And that is, we, the coach, the Kosciuszko coach can complain all he wants to, but that ball did not get far enough away from the catcher for those runners to move when they got a runner standing on second. So it was a smart play by Tanner Parker to get him. And that makes it a completely different inning. But now we have a runner on second and two outs than a runner on first and second and nobody out. So that was a big play in the ball game right there as far as the Knights are concerned. And now we're gonna get out of it with no runs, which is outstanding. An outstanding alert job by Tanner Parker. Gets the guy at first, drifting off the bag with nowhere to go. 
Willis applies the tag, and we end the inning with the score seven to three and no damage done. So leading off the bottom of the sixth for the Knights is Braden Epstein. Braden Epstein's walked tonight, hit a double in the right field line his last time up. He's one for one, scored a run. Let's low it in the dirt, one and oh. Again, lowering in the dirt, 2-0. Oh. So if he's head of the count, 2-0. Oh. Seven to three score, Knights leading. Nobody out. Bottom of the sixth inning. That's 3-0. Oh. So three fastballs from Ewell all low in the zone. That's ball four, low in the zone. Try to take something off of that one to get it over. But couldn't get it up in the zone. That'll bring Cade Kennedy up. Cade's 0 for 3 tonight. Hasn't had many nights where he's 0 for 3. Tonight's one of them. He may be due for something to happen. Curveball, 0 and 1. Got a good 12 to 6 curveball coming straight over the top. It's got some bite on it. Fastball high, K chased it, popped it out of play down 0 and 2. Well, I hope everyone's enjoying the picture tonight. We got some piece of uh, unbreakable glass. Put it up there on the third floor, mounted the camera. Looks outstanding, 4K. It's a great picture. With the net out of the way, it's much more enjoyable viewing. So I hope everybody's enjoying it. Like I said before the game, we can thank Dan Brown for putting all that together. He did a great job and it, it looks great. 0-2 offering to K, that's that curveball again. He's got a good one. And K takes it on the inside corner. That was a good pitch from Ewell. So that'll be one out. Epstein stands at first. Nice lead, 7 to 3. Matt Etheridge in for an injured Brooks Buchanan early in the game. Matt came in and promptly single. One for two on the night. It's the softbound ball. Matt runs well. It's going to be tough to get him out. And he's going to sail it. 
That's going to get the runner to third. Matt will stay at first. So now the Knights again have runners on the corners, and that's an error on the shortstop. Just short-armed it a little. Long, it kind of launched on him. Just simply didn't get his elbow up on that one and threw it up. If you get your elbow below your shoulder, it's going to go up, and that's what happened right there. Just tough luck for the shortstops. Pretty solid fielder. Just tried to rush it a little bit. He knew he had to. So Ethers at first on the air. Epstein advances to third on the air. So Knights have runners in the corners. One out. Brett Busby at the plate. Brett's 0 for 0. Couple of walks tonight. RBI. count to Brett. Matt was leaning right there. Back safe. Don't know if Coach Smith had anything on, but he's back safe in plenty of time. So got an 0-1 count to Brett. Good curveball. That's a good job by Brett. Going to get the run home. They're going to get him at first, but that's a good job to get the run home. Put it in play. Push it to the right side. Braden going on contact. That'll give the Knights a much-needed insurance run to move the lead to 8-3. to three. Mason Willis coming to the plate. Mason scored two runs on the evening. Struck out once. Got a single up the middle. Ball high. Don't think Mason saw that one real well. Kind of had an interesting reaction after that ball buzzed him right up under his chin. There's that good curveball again, one and one. Foul back, one and two. It's a good pitch from Mule right there, low and in. Mason did a good job of his bat on it. In a hole, one and two now, and Mule's got the good breaking pitch. It's a good chance he sees it right here. Catcher sets up on the inside half. Fastball, two and two. Breaking pitch, fouled off. Still two and two. Ball high, three and two. Fastball up around the chin again. Full count, two outs. Ethers is second. And his two out lead. So he can round, for, round third and get home quicker. There's a high fly ball out to left field. Think it's going to stay in play. Left fielder under it and makes the play. So in that end, and the Knights nice get one run to tack on to the four run lead to make it a five run lead. No hits. Era on the whippets in that inning, and at the end of six, the score is eight to three nights.
One error and one man left on base. Due, for, due up for the Whippets, Ty Raymond, Parker Riles, and Will Carter. To lead off for the whip, it's the capture number 30, Ty Ramage. Ty Ramage to lead off the top half of the seventh for Kosciuszko. Cole does a good job getting ahead right there, 0 and 1. First pitch over, first man out. Every pitcher wants to do that every inning. Get ahead 0 and 1 and get the first out of the inning. Your chances of being successful go way up. One and one pitch, ball high and away. Ball two, two and one. Good pitch, two, two, outside corner. Ramage chased it, missed it. Third ball inside half, fouled off, 2-2. Two, two. There's a great changeup right there from Cole Wilkerson. He hadn't thrown one of those yet, but that was an outstanding changeup. And had Romage way out in front of that. That was a good pitch. Cole needs to throw that more, in my opinion. That was well executed. Good arm action. That ball goes straight down. Hitter had no chance to hit that pitch. And Parker Riles comes up, playing third base now. Oh, one count, one out. Top of the seventh. Knights lead, eight to three. There it is again. Another pitch, zero oh and two. They are way out in front of that. That does have great arm action from Cole Wilkerson. Good breaking pitch, and he sets him down on three pitches. All three of those were well executed. Good job, Cole. So now we're two outs. Two outs in the bottom of the seventh one, I mean top of the seventh, one left to get. Will Carter, the left fielder up. Cole starts him off with a fastball for a strike. Here's a drive into right center, but that's going to do it. Etheridge range, ranges over and makes the play, and the Knights will secure the victory and sweep the Kosciuszko Whippets in division play. Knights win by a score of 8-3. to three. Winning pitcher will be Dylan Brown. Knights will move to 18-4 and four and remain perfect in division play. Next game for West Lauderdale will be at New Hope tomorrow. Saturday afternoon game away. Monday will be our next broadcast at home with the last district game of the year against League Central. Thank you for listening to the West Lauderdale Night Broadcast. 
Hope you enjoyed the new uh, net free camera. It was outstanding. The Knights are on a roll. We've won, I don't know how many in a row, but it's a good bit. And uh, we hope to keep going. We now have secured the one seed uh, in the north half on our side of the bracket. We'll be the one seed coming out of Region 4 for the playoffs, which means we will host home field advantage games ones and one and three all the way through to the state finals, should we make it that far. So we got that to look forward to. Playoffs are coming. Y'all have a good evening. This is Marcus Willis signing off for Westalder Athletics and Westalderdale Baseball.